So this video is going to be uh, another Amstrad CPC game, Robin Hood Legend Quest, which is quite possibly a pretty rare game. But what I do know is that it is one of the very last games that was released for the Amstrad and one of the last Codemasters releases for the Amstrad. At this point, most companies had just completely abandoned 8-bit computers. Uh, this was designed by the Oliver Twins and uh, you can see there uh, they are credited as Dizzy Enterprises. Unusually for an Amstrad game. It's a conversion of a NES game and you have this Quattro Adventure cartridge uh, with four games on and Super Robin Hood is probably the best game on this cartridge uh, but I think it, the NES is a little bit more friendly uh, towards games so it does play a, a bit better on that here's the cassette, I've got my Amstrad set up and uh, let's load it up and play some Robin Hood Music sounds like Bubble Dizzy on the ZX Spectrum. I wonder if it's made by the same person. Alright, so the game starts. I suppose first impressions are everything. And the first impressions are not brilliant. This is actually an Amstrad game, uh, but it seems to have carried over the colour clash from what should only be on a ZX Spectrum game. Robin Hood himself is a really big character here. Uh, but yeah, it's a scrolling platform game. It's a little bit slow, but I think it's fast enough. And you might notice actually that the main character has got some pretty good animation. And when you stand still, he has a little look around as well. So I quite like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm attacking the guy off screen because you can actually kill them even when they're off screen. So I was just doing that for a bit of safety. So the thing about this game is that it's the design is very very tight. So you've got this massive character, uh, but it's it's more it's more of a puzzle platformer than a an action game, although it kind of plays like an action game. And when you fight against enemies, it's all about timing. And these little guys here, you can't kill them, so just jump over. I think if you look past how slow it is and how the graphics are displayed, it is actually quite nice. The pixel art is drawn really well and there's all these little touches here and there. I've seen a lot of Amstrad games that do a lot less than this that are a lot slower. Although it would be nice if there was a proper Amstrad version rather than just a Spectrum conversion. I don't know, would it be too much to have in-game music? So if you charge up your bow and arrow then you'll shoot it as soon as you get off the ladder. 
That's a nice little touch that I took advantage of there. Uh, yeah, there's a, a fair bit of waiting around in this game. So I really didn't think it was even possible for Amstrad games to have that sort of colour clash. I wonder if it was to save on memory. Oh, look at that. Nice. See, there really isn't much room to manoeuvre. So there's a little bit of a, an annoying thing with the controls that you don't really see in-game, uh, but it does take just a little bit of time when you press left or right for the character to actually start moving which I really hate in game because of course you don't want to overshoot where you you want to walk on, on such tightly designed areas. Now if I remember right the layout here is exactly the same as the original NES version but I would assume this to be considerably cut down really but I don't know. I don't know if the full game has been converted over. So this game is actually a, a sort of sequel to the first game that the Olivers made for Codemasters. Not the first game that they made, but the first game they made for Codemasters. And that was originally published in 1986. And this one came out in 1993, which is really, really late for an Amstrad game. They do like their chained up skeletons, don't they? You see a lot of those in the first Dizzy game. I oh, I usually have a lot of trouble here and I've the last two times I played this, I got a game over at this part. Um, but I'm doing a lot better here than I usually do. I think I've taken two hits so far. So what I usually do, which is different from most other people I think, is that I'll play a game and record the footage and if it's not very good, I'll delete it. I think what a lot of people do is just slap on a game on an emulator and just upload the the first 30 seconds of a game. Even if they don't know the controls and they don't know what the game's about, how it works, what to do. What separates me from most others is that I do actually know the game that I'm playing, usually. I recorded footage of uh, Mr. Heli for the Amstrad, which I, I've wanted to do a video of for a while, but I've never turned it into a proper video because I can't beat the first boss. I just can't do it. So we're into another area here. I've looked at a long play of this. Uh, somebody went to the trouble of playing through the whole game with uh, an infinite lives cheat on. 
Now this is 12 minutes in for me, but on their video, this is still a really early part of the game. So this is probably about a fifth of the way through, or less than that perhaps. So really, I'm quite impressed with how much game they've managed to squeeze in here. Oh, apparently that was a, a collectible. Now I do have to come back here later because you have to kill that guy uh, to trigger something later on. I've seen copies of this for sale for the ZX Spectrum on eBay for £99. I don't think the game's worth that much money and I paid a lot less for this copy, believe me. It is going a little bit slower here with all this action. You know, I think this actually uses the same colour palette as the Dizzy games do on the Amstrad. Trying to work out what to do. Seems like a dead end, doesn't it? I've seen this for the Atari ST and the Amiga. On those computers it looks more like a copy of Gods by the Bitmap Brothers. So yeah, there's not really much AI in the enemies, it's more of a timing puzzle more than anything else. I don't know if they made Robin Hood too big, but he's just he's bigger than all the enemies. His head sticks through the wall. I've got to admit the sound effects do get a little bit annoying sometimes because all you hear, even off screen, is those fireballs. And then you might hear two at once. If there was the option, I would prefer music. Yeah, this is definitely one of those games that's not for impatient people. There's a lot of waiting around. So in that red water, I died straight away, didn't I? I lost a life straight away. But it turns out in this green water, once I risk it, you are in fact perfectly safe. So I guess the the red stuff is poison. Now sometimes I wonder if uh, companies carried on releasing games for certain systems, what else would they have released? So Codemasters had already released Micro Machines uh, on the NES and the Master System at this point. So if they'd carried on releasing games, would they have released Micro Machines for the Amstrad? What else did they make? Um, they made Fantastic Dizzy, so I don't know if they would have released a home computer version of that. Uh, they made a Tennis Game. Pete Sampras Tennis, 
I mean, they released this. They could have converted to some other NES games. They didn't release any of them Spacehead games. I think there were two of those, wasn't there? I kind of wonder what the reviews were for this game. Because at this point, games were pretty scarce for magazines to review. So would they have jumped on it? Just because it's uh, something to something to play, because there were still Amstrad magazines well after the games dried up. I think Amstrad Action magazine ran until mid nineteen ninety five or something. I mean, quite honestly, I don't know who would have still bought Amstrad magazines that late on. Right, so finally, game over. And even though I have a score of 6,010, it doesn't let me type it into the high school table. So, is the high school table broken in this game? That's kind of <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, there we have it. That is Robin Hood Legend Quest for the Amstrad CPC. It's got its flaws, but I actually think it's quite good. I quite like it. And that's the end of the video. Once again, thank you for watching.